Good evening, everyone. It's 5.30 and uh, I'm so excited to get started and we'll keep an eye on um, the waiting room. And if you find that I am a little distracted, it's because I'm admitting others in from the waiting room. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, my name is Benita Dillon. I am the director for um, new students and family programs, and that's why I host these sessions for families. Um, welcome. This is our fourth virtual orientation session, and um, I'm grateful that you are here. And uh, so is uh, Karen from our dining services. Um, and I always get started the same way uh, by reminding everyone that we do this every Tuesday, Thursday, 5.30 to 6.30, and the schedule is available on our webpage, uh, Keelhaller Family at csun.edu. I normally share um, the schedule, but I have a new computer, yay, um, but that's not allowing me to share uh, from my screen. So uh, I had something new that I have requested Karen to share with, uh, with us, uh, since you have seen the prior schedule before. Um, uh, I wanted to sh have this visual up as I talk about the 20th, which is um, Sunday, move-in day. Uh, you'll be sent, your student will be sent a check-in time anywhere between 7 a.m. and um, 2 p.m., you will arrive at that time, park in a lot that you'll be directed to by our wonderful PD colleagues. Uh, from there, you walk over to uh, PIAC, which is our physical education and aquatic center. We will be um, bright eyed and bushy tailed to receive you and welcome you. Uh, give your student a packet and they will start collecting their uniforms within that building. Uh, they'll be given a big tote box in which they can um, uh, put all their items. And while they're doing that, we invite families to uh, go ahead and meet many folks. Um, you'll have met some of them uh, over these virtual sessions, but um, they'll be there uh, in person and answer any questions and make you feel like um, you can reach out to us anytime. Um, after that, that's going to take about 30 minutes. Uh, you will be um, off on your way to the designated dress hall that your student's going to be living in. Um, the person who's driving the car will stay in the car. Everyone else, including the student and any family members, can hop off. We'll have students, um, our, ex our returning students, helping you unload and um, take you to your room and you can get settled there and the next um, next session or the next thing that happens that afternoon um, is from two to three there will be some refreshments for families and the president's welcome uh, in our auditorium but your students will be uh, practicing their uh, formation with our commandants and then um, at three o'clock from three to three thirty um, there'll be a capping ceremony. It's a wonderful ceremony, uh, very brief, um, very uh, emotional and fun. Uh, once that is done, you will be able to head out to run any errands, do any last minute stuff, get some dinner, and you bring your students back to us at 6.30. Uh, they have some stuff that they have to take care of and your evening will be open to go do whatever it is that your heart desires. Um, the the um, during that window, you'll also be expected to make any exchanges to uniform sizes. So if they picked up a medium and they put it on and it didn't fit quite right, uh, they'll have an opportunity to go back to where the uniforms were and get the right size. So that has to happen by by um, seven o'clock that day. Um, so that'll be one uh, errand that you'll run um, in addition to finding food uh, off campus. Um, that's the deal for the 20th. Thank you, Karen, for having that up so people can, can get a visual. I will be sending this and some additional information out um, to all the families very soon. I just wanted to, uh, you to kind of look at what I was talking about. Um, and it's a little bit of housekeeping for today. Please keep your uh, devices 
to unmute and uh, be thinking of your questions while Karen is, and maybe Scott, is Scott on? Uh, uh, while they're uh, presenting to you, if you can uh, hold on to your questions or write your questions in chat, I will be, um, I will be responding to those uh, or reading out those for Karen and Scott to answer. And if there's something that's uh, on a topic that we've already covered and that pops up, I'll be happy to answer those if I know know what the response is. Uh, anything that's for the future sessions, I'll I'd like to hold off and have you hear uh, directly from the experts. Uh, I see a question about C three. Um, C three um, is an acronym for uh, Cadet Community Connection. It is a special program um, that we have where students can opt in to get, for lack of a better description, a surrogate family that's local in Vallejo um, because, um, you know, students sometimes get homesick and want to hang out with someone, um, have access to a pet or get a home cooked meal or just talk to someone who's local, uh, show them Vallejo. Um, so we, if the student opts, opts into this program, uh, they are matched with a family that lives in Vallejo and sometimes uh, faculty and staff members offer to be that surrogate family. I have done that for the last 11 years. Um, and once the match is made a student uh, with the student and the family, they have this uh, pre-made connection. So those participants of that program uh, will have a brief meeting um, with their hosts and get a chance to have dinner with them. And that detail is sent out to only those students who are participating. Um, with that, uh, one last thing to mention about the 20th, please be mindful, uh, wear comfortable shoes and dress in layers because it can get cold and it can get hot. Uh, depending on the kind of day and uh, time of day. So we want you to be uh, super mindful of that. So with that, I would like to um, invite Karen Goble. Um, and I still don't know if Scott is on, but if Scott, you're here, you're welcome as well. Um, I invite both of them to hop on and share what they um, have brought, brought to, put together for you. Um, with that, Karen. Okay, I'm going to just swap to a different uh, PowerPoint here so that that way everybody can see what I'm seeing. We um, want to welcome you to, to Cal Maritime Dining, and we're going to be uh, talking primarily just the ways to be able to get, uh, I apologize, I'm having a computer issue. There we go. Um, we're primarily going to be just talking through the step points of how, how do you get meals, how much do they cost, where do I get them from, what does the meal program look like, how is it different than maybe it was before if you happen to have friends or family that were uh, here on campus in, in uh, semesters past. Um, so I, I have a little presentation that I'm going to uh, be giving all of you, and then I, I'm mainly here just to service any of the questions that you might have regarding uh, dining meal plans and things like that. So uh, we'll, we'll go from there. So many of you probably already know that there were two meal plans that were an option. If, you, if your cadet is going to be somebody that lives on campus, they were, um, when they went into their housing program and they picked all the stuff for housing, they also picked which meal program they were on. There's two meal programs this year. Um, which there's a five meal uh, five meal plan and a seven meal plan. Both of them have two, two different types of flex money, which we'll talk a little bit about in a few minutes. Um, they are, if you are going to be somebody that maybe will go home on the weekends, obviously the five meal plan is probably a little bit better for you. We do have several uh, cadets that do stay here on the weekends and possibly holidays and things like that. And so, if that is going to be something that's more of interest to your cadet, then obviously you'd want to go with the bigger plan. Okay. Um, swipes versus flex. When we talk about a swipe, your your cadet will be given a port pass, and on your port pass, it'll 
be a little card that links everything from your how to get into your room to meals to uh, other things dealing with money on campus. Mine looks like this. I don't know if, how good that really shows, but it gives you a, a kind of an idea. Um, when you come in and you're part of the meal program at the very front of the marketplace door, you will come in and you will swipe your card or tap your card and it will get you access to the marketplace for that time period. So if you come, once you come in, there will be several different stations that you are able to go and choose from. Um, we have everything from a, a com comfort food to a uh, very stringent vegan option. Um, there's things that are, are very nutritionally sound. And then if you're just needing, you know, to have more of a, a comfort level where it's maybe a burger or a piece of pizza or something like that, that, that is also available. You would get your a direct portion size to begin with, but then you'd be able to go back as many times as you'd like to until you're full and, and ready to go on to your next class or, or whatever your schedule would dictate, okay? Um, if when you are, are in there, you cannot take any meals to go. We do have other ways to be able to get a meal to go. I know sometimes the, the cadets here, their schedules are very stringent and there are times where they might need to have a meal to go. There's a couple of other options for them to be able to do that and still use their swipe from that. One of those would be getting a meal equivalent or a meal exchange in Morrow Cove or Morrow Cove Market, which is housed just uh, right outside the marketplace. It will be open from two to seven in the middle of the afternoon. The marketplace does close down in between two and five o'clock. So that would be a spot where they could come in. They would be able to still eat. It would still be part of their meal program. It would not be something that they would necessarily uh, pay extra for or anything like that. Um, once five o'clock hits, uh, we do try and encourage everybody to come into the marketplace um, because they would be able to, number one, eat more, have bigger variety, and be able to get something that is a little bit more nutritionally sound. Okay. Um, flex. When you bought your meal plan, you either came with a $100 or $200 flex meals. Flex is just a basic dollar amount, and it is used for things for if you you'd like a frappuccino that day out of the bistro, or if you need a box of cereal. Um, it, it's things that are not necessarily a made to order meal or a, a, a meal that is um, that would be coming out of the marketplace or out of their dine-in option. It would be the things that would be extra. We have food trucks and things like that on, on site, but it, that doesn't come out of your all you can eat care plan or your swipe plan. It would come out of that flex dollars. So it's just giving them another set of something to be able to do something special with or something different with. Okay. There is a new reliable currency on campus now. It is called Sand Dollars. Sand Dollars is pretty much, uh, you can use that anywhere pretty much on campus, everywhere from the bookstore to laundry, uh, to food trucks, grub pub, vending machines. It is um, the same as using a debit or credit card in, in places. If you do not, um, if it's something where your cadet doesn't have any kind of banking uh, information or anything of that yet, it's just another tool that, you know, for families to be able to give their, their student or their cadet some money and still be able uh, to allow them to be able to function right off of their court pass. At the end of the, the semester, anything that is on a sand dollar is refundable because it's money that's just in exchange. It's just really, a tool for you to be able to get your cadet more money if they're needing that. Okay. Um, we have two, we have three locations where you can get food on campus. The we have um, we do have everything advertised in several different locations. So when your cadet comes in, they will see all of this information in various spots. But just so you are all aware of kind of what the meal times are, what they look like the different avenues that they can go to in order to be able to get food. Um, some of the top uh, questions that we had gotten um, just over the years were things, you know, like if I don't have a meal plan, are there, is there anything that I can do? Yes, you can go ahead and use the door rate at the marketplace and the dollar amounts are, are up there for you. We are a cashless campus, so it would need to be through a debt or 
uh, debit or credit card only kind of situation. We um, at all of the other locations, both at, at Morrow Cove Market and at the Bistro, they are able to use a debit card and, and wouldn't have any problem getting anything that they would need. Uh, we do have some mobile apps that are available. Uh, Transact is the mobile app that you'd be able to use in the Bistro if you're wanting like a cup of coffee or something of that nature, and you want to order it in advance, saying that you you know you only have a tight frame in between classes, you got like 10 minutes. You can place that order for your cup of coffee, go by, get it, take it to your next class with you, and it and it'll be already ready to go. And just like you would at a regular Starbucks, you go in and you get the one with your name on it, and then you can go ahead and go. Um, we have a app called Every Day, and it's actually it's really good for the cadets there, but it's also good for parents. And it will allow you to be able to go online to an app and be able to know what's available in the marketplace not only um, from the different kinds of food that we're serving that day, but it'll also give you all the nutritional information. Um, so, you know, if, you're, if your son comes home and he tells you, you know, he hasn't had a vegetable in a week, you might be able to use that to have the conversation of, yeah, well, you, you had the option of broccoli and Brussels sprouts and, and, and other things like that, just to be able to have a, that kind of a conversation. We do also provide a salad bar and soups and other things of that nature. But I want to just make sure everybody knows that Everyday app is available. So that would be another uh, another thing that you could use in order to be able to have conversation with your cadet that's going to school here. Um, if you, we run out of Swipes Flex dollars or Sand dollars, you're always able to log into your Blackboard account and add money or upgrade money or change meal plans. There is a deadline on that whether or not the, you change meal plans. It's 60% into the semester. So it's towards the end of uh, middle of October um, would be the deadline to be able to upgrade or make any kind of changes. Um, this just gives you a, a broad scope view over what is good where, so that that way you can look and go, okay, I know now that you've got. I think I got muted. Everybody, can everybody hear me? Okay. Um, it just gives you another opportunity so you know exactly what avenues you can go spend or your cadet can go spend that uh, type of money in. Okay, so that's a good thing to kind of look, look back at. Um, Mobile applications for dining, these are all good to go. Um, so if you want to uh, take your phone and do the QR code, it will allow you to download the Everyday app for all the nutritional purposes, the Transact for mobile ordering, um, Blackboard to be able to add anything to uh, any of the accounts. Uh, Grubhub, Grubhub is something that is new to our campus um, that's going to be taking place this fall. Um, that would be, it gives you the directions on the QR code of being able to how to get into Grubhub. Grubhub is something where they would have to use their sand dollars or a debit or credit card to be able to use. They do get a little bit of an extra discount to be able to do it through campus. They also can use their Grubhub app anywhere, um, anywhere in the US. So if you, they go home on the weekend and they're wanting to get a burrito or something like that delivered, they will be able to get a little bit of a benefit using it that way as well. Uh, and, and here's just the QR code that we give everybody. So when they're at the point to be able to sign up for Grubhub, that that is there. Um, it does want you to be able to type in you know, what your email is for your Cal Maritime email. So there'll be a big push or a big thing that goes out after, you know, during the beginning of school or during orientation so that that way we know for a fact everybody has their correct email information to be able to make it, make this happen. Um, for anybody that is on the call that is not that is not living on campus um, and does have any kind of um, you know food quality or food equity needs, we do partner with CalFresh and they would be able to. Here's a QR code to be able to get the application if you're. Uh, concerned if you are eligible or not, it, it has all that information in it. Um, and that information is also something that if you come and talk to myself in the marketplace or 
for anybody in the admissions office, they should be able to walk you through them. And that was that was just my little spiel. What kinds of questions do you have or things that are, are burning in, in your minds right now? I just want to tack on to something that Karen just said, uh, the last thing she said about basic uh, needs. Um, the campus also has um, a basic needs program for those students who, whether or not they are on the meal plans, uh, they uh, can check out the web page for basic needs and meet up with people on campus who run a food pantry um, and, and can get access to some food. Um, so just keep, keep that in mind or share that with your student. Um, so we have our first question, Karen. Are there staple items available every day like cheese pizza, sandwich bar, or hamburgers? It, the menu really varies every day, but there are things that you, you would be able to like we'll always have cereal and you can always make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. There will always be a, a grill item and grill specials available. Sometimes it might be a cheeseburger. Sometimes it might be something else. Uh, same with pizza. There will be different things at every station every day. There's eight different stations that are open. And so it does allow us to be able to provide quite a variety to be able to make it so everybody can have a little bit of everything and um, and if it is something where, you know, a hamburger is what you're wanting that day, then you can not only have that, you could have two if you want. Um, I think that answered Nestor's question about how, you know, food changing, is it the same? What's the selection? Um, but he also is asking, do most students leave on the weekends? Um, Karen, what's your take on that? I would say we have, I would say probably 80%. Of, of cadets leave on the weekend. We we do still do uh, brunch because we have found that um, the the cadets that are still here do not wake up very early because they have been awake every day at you know seven o'clock getting down to formation and and have had a pretty rigorous schedule, um, which is why we do brunch versus having a breakfast and lunch on the weekends. And but Saturday is by far my slowest day of the week. And I'd like to add, if it's okay, Karen, um, that it's, it could be a little, um, it, depending on what's going on in their um, school uh, requirements, assignments and such. So around midterms, there are probably fewer people leaving uh, around weekends as um, any cornerstone projects are uh, due, they uh, tend to stay on weekends and work on those. Um, so depending on where they are with their academics, there might be, uh, they might be more likely to be around at, at different times of the academic year. Um, next question is, are you still offering catering, like something special for cadets for their birthday? Yes, we do. We, we, we have a thing called We Care Package, and it is actually available through the, what, the dining website on um, the CSUM website. So if you go to CSUM and then go into dining, you'll be able to get to it. And there's several different items, uh, everything from a birthday cake to a pizza party, to anything that you could possibly think of um, to be able to get to your cadet. You know, we prefer to go into an email just so we can get as much detail as we can get from everybody. Um, and, but that way, like say you have a birthday cake, we will write out happy birthday with your cadet's name on it will get a, a class schedule so that that way we'll know where when it is that they would come either come in and get it or if they want uh if you'd like for it to be a surprise we can arrange for that as well whether it's going to a class or something of that nature so yes that's definitely still available and and waiting to be used thank you and the next question is around grubhub is that a unique cma thing or regular account with some some information. How does that work? Uh, if you use, if you set it up using the Cal Maritime piece, there is some. There's a discount and things that are available to you. It is the same site as what Grubhub is. 
so it's not um, with the exception of this, they are not when they put that in there under the Cal Maritime piece, they are not eligible to be able to, for instance, purchase things like um, alcohol or medicine or anything of that nature. Thank you. Um, does the meal include a main dish side and drinks or just a main dish? It, it, when they come into the marketplace, it is all inclusive. So you can get your, you can get salad, soup, main dish, as many main dishes as you would like. Um, there, we always have, we do have soda. We also have juice, coffee, other beverages that they can partake in. We'll have dessert. Um, Karen, may I ask you to talk about the various stations that you have and what kind of food each serves so parents can get an idea of what what the, the layout is? Sure. When, when you come in, you'd be able to grab a, you know, you can either grab a plate or we will have plates available um, for you. There will be a station that is a what we call a global station, which will rotate through different kinds of nationalities. Uh, of, of food. So you might get tacos there one day, you might get, uh, you know, pad thai there another day, it, it will always rotate. Uh, we will have a some kind of a sandwich station, it will either be a sandwich where they're able to um, take it and put it into a panini press or something of that nature. Um, there's also things that are wraps and flatbreads and it'll be again something that will change all the time. There is a, a what we call a savory station, which would be something that where you'd be able to get a whole balanced, nutritious food, whether it's uh, chicken, mashed potatoes, and a side of green beans. Um, there is another station that is all completely either uh, vegetarian or vegan. Um, so if you have different kinds of di uh, dietary needs or things like that, that would probably be one of the better stations for you to be able to get accommodated in. There is a, a grill station that we will operate that will have, it might have hamburgers in it, it might have chicken or grilled fish, it might have a nacho bar at it one day. It's really gonna kind of change up throughout the, the semester. There'll be times where we might have breakfast for dinner that night. And so they get, you know, uh, pancakes and scrambled eggs and, and that kind of thing. There will always be a cereal bar. So there'll be like, five, six different kinds of cereal, and they can eat that going from breakfast, lunch to dinner. So if you have somebody that doesn't really eat anything but cereal all day, they will be fine. There will be a salad bar that runs kind of in the middle that has um, everything from a fresh uh, green salad that you can fit your condiments of your choice on to compostable salads, you know, that have already been made, whether it be a potato salad or pasta salad or something of that nature. Um, and then there will, and then kind of around the corner, there will be a spot where if somebody wants to make like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich or, or something of that nature, that would be available to them as well. I'm hungry now. Okay. <laughs> All that food. Uh, um, since the new cadets, oh, where did that question go? Um, how can we go about changing the plan that we previously signed, signed up for? You will need to go back into the same outlet that you did your housing group and, and it, it'll, it will allow you to, to do that. If for whatever reason you have any problem, then you will need to contact the housing office and they will reset it for you. Um, and if you find that this is challenging in any way, you can send me an email at orientation at csun.edu. I just put that email and I'll be happy to direct it to whoever can follow up with you. So please feel free to do that. Um, are there any activities on weekends? Um, the short answer is yes. And please wait till August 15th when you will be meeting with a large panel on sense of belonging and they'll go over all the different types of things that we do outside the classroom. So Nestor, great question. Just hang tight till 15th. Um, since the new cadets can't drive, how do they get off campus? Um, you'll find that they're very resourceful. They'll make friends to take them off campus um, and, uh, you know, rides and such. Um, but if they don't have cars, we don't have any public transportation that's easy to get outside the campus when you walk towards our PIAC, which is our 
physical education and aquatic center. Um, there is a bus stop that uh, might uh, work for them to get around. And then there's, of course, Lyft and Uber. Karen, were you going to add anything to that? No, I'm glad you spoke that. Um, my son is really interested in getting a paying job when he gets to campus. Can you remind me who he is to contact? Once he's here on campus, so when you come to campus on the 20th, You'll be meeting with student employment uh, guru or the the staff that help that that does that uh, during your um, your services fair while your student is picking up uniforms. So you'll get to meet them. But on the thirtieth of August, uh, we'll have a huge services fair for the students, and that's when they'll get to make um, you know make their connections with people who provide different services and student employment is definitely one of them. So we want students to work as much as student want, students want to work for us. So don't be, don't be worried, they'll get contacted. Um, and Karen, do you wanna add something to that? If you know that, that your cadet would like to work in food service, then on the 20th, when, when you all come in for your freshman orientation, I will actually be at one of the tables up in the PIAC area, and we'll have a bunch of little cards that will have all the directions on uh, how to get started with being able to, to get a part-time job at um, being a student on campus in the diamonds. Yeah. Um, Nestor's asking about um, nut allergies and how to avoid those situations. Could you talk to that, please? Um, sure. If you have a specific allergen that you know that you are um, having a concern with, the first thing that I would recommend is making sure that you download that everyday app because it will tell you all of the allergens in it. Um, there are certain allergens that we definitely pay attention to. And when uh, that, you know, so peanuts, for example, where we know that that could be a, a really big thing. Um, not only is it in the everyday app, but there will be other advertisements that go along with that dish that says, just so you are aware, there is, you know, there's an alert here. There's a peanuts, there is peanuts in this dish. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, if it's something smaller, like um, maybe it's gluten, where, you know, you can kind of figure out for the most part what has gluten in it, um, but you're not quite sure, then uh, please reach out. You can reach out using the email address that's on the, the screen right now at the Cal Maritime Dining. My office is on the second floor of the marketplace and my door is open 99% of the time. So um, more than welcome for the cadet to come pop on in and, and we'll be able to have a conversation and kind of give them some uh, guidance on, on what it is that they should either avoid or what they could eat instead and that sort of thing. Thank you. Um, Sheila is asking, I thought we were to encourage our students to stay on campus. Yes, that is true. And um, I, though I Karen, Karen's 80% uh, students leaving over the campus seemed a little high to me. And I suspect that. Can, can I speak there real quick? Yes. The folks, when I say 80%, they're going home to see all of you. A lot of them, if they live close or they, we have a good population that is out of the Sacramento market. So they're able to get home in an hour or so. It, it's not far away. So they're, they're going home to see mom and dad and, and all of that kind of thing. It's not that they're out just roaming the Bay Area. It, you know, they're, they're going home to see family. And if I may add to that, um, Karen is um, likely figuring that number from her food consumption and attendance at the dining hall. Um, but as we all know, students don't might not want to eat uh, at the dining center after five days of that food. And they have Grubhub and they have DoorDash and they could potentially have gone um, on an excursion down the street and decided to pick up a burrito. So they might be on campus, but maybe finding food from some other possible source. Um, so the numbers are, you know, um, just from that lens, I wanted to kind of point that out. Is that fair, Karen? Yes, absolutely. Okay. 
Uh, I hope that answers your question, Sheila, but you'll also be meeting uh, the folks who plan events um, across uh, the week and the weekend, and they'll probably give you a little bit more detailed information around that. Um, how do athletes get enough nutrition and calories because of their practice schedules? Well, we're, we're open till eight o'clock, which extends the time when practice is over. Um, the athletics department, generally speaking, the last practice ends between seven and 7.15, which is why we purposely stay open until eight. Is that sufficient? Do you have any follow-up on that, Lisa? Are you needing guidance for an athlete trying to get extra calories? All right, we'll keep following the chat. And um, at the end, if Liza wants to hop on and ask something else, we'll take care of that. Um, Sarah says, you mentioned you can't do to-go orders, but is a cadet eating and have some leftover dessert? Can he take that with him? We can't take any food out of the market. Now, if you are eating at one of the other locations, for instance, at Morocco Market or out, out of the bistro, you can take any of that to go if you want to. Um, and if whether it's half eaten or you want to buy a whole sandwich to go, you're able to do that that way. So the marketplace is like a, a all you can eat kind of an operation. So if you go to such a operation. I can't even remember if there's any such place out there after the, uh, after the, um, after COVID. Um, it used to be sweet tomatoes and those kinds of places. You can't bring food out. You, you eat what you can there and then you leave. Um, is August 20th the first day for cadets to begin their CMA journey? Will they be expected to live on campus for this week before classes begin? Uh, James, that's absolutely true. It's their first day of the journey, and they will say goodbye to you at 6.30 that evening. And we have like a fun, uh, informative week uh, program built out for them. Um, and that'll go Monday morning at 7.20 till uh, sometime in the evening on Friday. And each day will start about at 7.20 and end after dinner around um, 7.38. So they have a pretty robust program and um, they will not be able to see family or, you know, so your time with them ends at 6.30 on, on the 20th. Uh, we're flying in from out of state to drop our son. Is there a way to mail items to cadets, uh, either UPS or Amazon? Absolutely. Um, when your son or daughter arrives here in their welcome packet, there will be their mail key and uh, their mailbox number, and um, they should share that with you. And when you have that information, um, if you want to write down the address uh, where it's going to go, it's going to be your cadet's name, and then Cal Maritime, and their mailbox number. And the address is One Morrow Cove, One Morrow Cove, um, Vallejo, oops, sorry, Vallejo CA 94590. That's the address where you will be sending your packages. Um, and the good news is I'm happy to share today that we have uh, just put in our first set of lockers for all sorts of packages. So. And they'll they'll be able to just walk into a pack uh, into the lockers and pull out their packet without having to stand in line at the mailbox uh, at the mailboxes uh, that are here for students. So be sure to ask your student what their mailbox number is. Um, this one's for you. My son burns a lot of calories and gets very hungry at 10 p.m. Okay. Then. Then your your son's probably going to need to use things like out of Moro Cove, where we have Moro Cove is. Let me go into that a little bit. It is it is um, kind of like our on site uh, convenience store. So there's going to be things in there like boxes of cereal, pasta, 
um, my, microwavable meals that they are able to go back to their room and, and make and cook and things like that. So there, there will be food available. We'll just have to plan a little bit in order to be able to um, kind of do a mini grocery run and then be able to take it up to his room. And also um, have some um, maybe um, bars or, you know, healthier foods just stacked in their rooms. And remember, I mentioned the uh, basic needs uh, pantry. They'll, have, they'll be able to access that um, uh, to build up a little bit of in inventory in their rooms. We don't encourage too much food in the room because then that creates a whole other type of problem with uh, insects and all of that stuff. But um, they should keep a little bit of reserve in their rooms. And we have the convenience store uh, called Morrow Cove and the food pantry. Do the dorm rooms come with a mini fridge and micro? Yes, each room is outfitted with a combo of fridge and microwave. Sorry, Karen, you could have said that. <laughs> is there anything else you want to add, Karen? Um, I. Or were there not any, was that it for the questions? I They're that. slowing down, so maybe. Okay. Um... Um, the big thing is that if there is things that come up, it's just really encourage your cadet to, to reach out and say something. And, um, you know, we, we can make changes and do things that we need to do, but only if we know. So please encourage them to come and, and talk to us, uh, whether it's myself or the chef or, or whoever it might be in the marketplace. and. Um, we do have an advisory committee that is ran by cadets and they come and bring us suggestions and we meet once a month. So if that's something that your uh, cadet might be something interested in, um, then please encourage them to do that and get involved. So that's, that's how changes are made. Um, and each station has people serving the food. And each of those members of uh, Karen's team can be asked a question if they have uh, a concern or they want to get more information. And even if that team member doesn't have the exact answer, my experience has been that they'll say, I'll just ask and come back to you. So they'll run inside, find Karen or uh, someone else on the team who can respond to that question. So always remind students this is they're doing this for the first time on their own so always remind them that did you ask someone did you go to Karen's office uh, what did you do to help yourself because we need to really put that as make that part of their their response to when they need something um how early does breakfast begin Monday through Friday breakfast starts uh in the marketplace it starts at 7 a.m and uh, if you are an early morning riser and you, you need something earlier than that, then the bistro opens at 6.30. Um, and students need to be in the quad at, uh, for formation at 7.20. Um, and technically, they're supposed to arrive five minutes early and be ready for the 7.20 formation. So um, they could potentially go into the bistro, which is adjacent to the uh, to the quad and grab a cup of coffee or a scone if they get down to the lower campus from their res hall early. Um, is there is the text dine maritime still working for sending questions or concerns? Yes, yes, it is. Yes, do you it want is. do you want to tell us what that there, text is? Um, there's a thing called D text. And we were kind of getting it worked on, which is why it's not, uh, wasn't in the, the format here for all of you right now. But um, by the by August 20th, we think we got it situated. So on August 20th, you will see a lot of advertisement for a thing called DTEX. And basically, if you will um, type in four or five numbers that we'll give you, it will connect you to all of the dining information that is given out. So it will, if there's something, you know, a barbecue going on in the quad today, it will tell you about that. If there is a, um, a 
neighboring chef coming over and doing something in the dining center it will it will give you that information if you are here and you have a question it's a good way just to be able to to text that you know i i'm i'm missing you know I, i've lost my phone or whatever that is and it's a way that we can communicate back and forth through uh text we also respond on it fairly quickly because there's six people that get the text all at once on my end and so we all kind of jump to make sure that, that that's taken care of. Um, the other thing that uh, is good is that you just, not only is it good for us to get the information, but it's good to be able to get the information out to everybody else. Change in hours. Um, if there was an emergency and we didn't end up having uh, water or power shut off or, or something of that nature, it, it is a way that we give communication out to all of the cadets. And it's something that you all can keep up with too. So if you want to know what's going on on campus, it's something you can subscribe to. We also have uh, an Instagram part, an Instagram account, um, and it's just uh, Cal Maritime Dining. And if you want to follow that, there's a lot of pictures that go on as what things that we're doing on campus when it comes to not dining, um, whether it's just different parties, people celebrating different things. So it's another good way for you to know kind of what's going on here. Thank you. Um, Karen, is the pr presentation complete? Could you possibly uh, stop sharing? Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Then I can see you. See, I should have said that sooner. Um, are drinks unlimited only when they swipe or can you get drinks throughout the day? If you are getting, if you are in the dining hall and you are wanting like a, a Coke, then then they're free with your swipe. If you are wanting a, a Frappuccino or something that that out of the bistro, then that would be something that would be an additional time that you would need to get. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Um, is there nutritional information posted for food offerings, uh, calories and portion size? All of that will be in the everyday app. Okay. Um, I just added a link um, to chat. Uh, that is where any, uh, that is where all our recordings of these sessions are getting posted. Um, so if you missed some part of it or the previous ones or anything coming up that you are unable to attend, you can find those there. It takes a couple of days for me to get the recording uh, from Zoom and then have it posted to that web page. So always please um, give us a couple of days uh, to post them, but that's where you'll find them. Um, and there are some older ones that you can look through um, as well if you wish because Karen and I are celebrities, right, Karen? Um, all right, it looks like um, questions are slowing down. Um, where do you buy sand dollars to add to cadet accounts? Through the Blackboard, through Blackboard app. And where is that, Karen? How, how are parents to know what to do? The Blackboard is there was a QR code in the presentation that you can um, that you can get it that way. You can add funds to the Blackboard once they get their court pass during that first week of orientation. They are able to add it at any place that that does an exchange. So whether it's the front, we can load it at the front place of the marketplace. They can or, uh, load it at the keel hauler shops for. Uh, uniforms and things like that. They can load it there. They can load it at the cashier station and the administration building. Uh, the easiest way, to, in my opinion, to do it, though, is do the QR uh, code because you can do a transfer. You don't even need to go in to do it. It's just not an amount of time. Thank you. Um, so do the parents and cadets need to have all these apps? That is completely up to you. <laughs> Yeah, if you want to know, uh, want that type of information, download the app, and then you can, and then you, you're in the know. There's going to be no FOMO then. You, everything is out there. 
how can I be sure we're receiving all the emails and notifications? I received some emails, but did not receive others uh, about the series of Zoom orientation calls. Christopher, I'm so sorry that uh, it seems like we are uh, inconsistent. Uh, earlier, it, I did put in a um, form and a, a link to a form. Uh, please go ahead and click on that and uh, give us the information to contact you. And um, I will provide that uh, after the 20th when it's I have everyone's information uh, to um, the platform, which is sending out the information um, to families. Um, that's the best I can do at this time. But if you email me also at um, orientation at csum.edu and send me, let me know that you need to be added. I will verify with uh, liaison who, who, who's the platform that sends out these uh, communications that you're included. But I don't know why it would be that it's inconsistent. If you're there, you should be receiving them all. Um, send me some more details uh, at that orientation email and I'll look into it. Um, so I always um, leave the last few minutes for folks who, for any reason, were not able to type in their questions and um, uh, would like to unmute and ask their question verbally. Uh, please do that now while I look for uh, Nestor's question, which is, is there an advantage to having sand dollars versus students' personal ATM card? There's not. It, it's exactly the same. It was it was meant to be set up for somebody that does not have access. All right. Oh, two new messages. Can they use Apple Pay on campus? That is a good question. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't used I, Apple Pay I'm anywhere. I need to get on back campus. to you on that one. I, I, yeah. That's a good question, I, and I'm, I'm yeah. just not sure. We'll check on that. Um, I can't see a name on it. 602139. Uh, will you please um, send me an email on um, orientation at csum.edu and I'll be happy to um, respond. Uh, about sand dollars, I saw like, can it be used? For laundry, is it inside campus or outside laundry shops? It's it, in on campus laundry. Okay. Yeah, all laundry is in res halls. Um, Brady, uh, you raised your hand. You want to unmute and ask your question? So um, this is from a previous um orientation uh, I was curious my son would probably need to buy uh, issue shoes do they have those that go with the uniforms on campus for purchase or is there something he needs to buy before he gets to school you don't need to purchase them here uh, a pair of black uh, boots and baits which are your your dress shoes are part of the uniform issue and um, they'll be given to him along with all the other uniforms Oh, okay. So yeah. yeah, just that's part of his, his uniform yes. that he'll be handed on the 20th. Great. Uh, yeah. Heather beat me to it. Um, asking the question, they do have to bring their own um, sneakers or tennis shoes or whatever the trainers, whatever the, the, the name for those shoes are uh, currently being used by our students. They need to have those. Uh, and if they're an athlete and need cleats or things like that, that's all on the student. But the uniform shoes will be provided. Um, do you know when roommates will be assigned? I met with uh, I met with uh, residence life folks today, and I was informed that they're almost done with all of that and should be sending out those emails definitely this week. So hang tight. Uh, can they wear tennis shoes with with any of their uniforms? Absolutely not. Um, with khakis, they have to wear the, a shoe called Bates. Um, and uh, with um, 
with their boilers or when they're on the ship, they may wear a steel-toed boot, which is part of their uh, uniform issue. Uh, we did sign up for the uniforms and shoes, including sizing information. Is there a way for us to confirm that the information has been received? Um, yes, uh, if you send me an email, again, at orientation at csum.edu, I will look at the form um, that uh, the list that I have. And if I do not find your student there, I will respond. If you don't hear from me after you've emailed me, um, it's because I found them and I don't need to respond to you. Is there a, a, oh, is there a list of things that they should have for their res halls, bedding, et cetera? Yes, there is. If you go to our website and insert in the search uh, uh, field, just put in what to bring, it'll give you a, it'll give you the web page where all that list is available. Is wearing uniform all week? Absolutely. So they have a couple of things that they can wear throughout the week. They'll be given two um, khaki uniforms, pants and tops, uh, and they will also be issued a boiler suit uh, depending on their, on their uh, major. And they will need to be in one of those two uniforms throughout the day morning till uh, the evening after 4.30 they can be in um, their PE staff, um, but they are to be in uniform at all times throughout the week. Uh, is there a place to get drinking water around campus or do they have to purchase it from Morocco? Cove? Can they get lemonade or iced tea any place or only during marketplace hours? That's for you, Karen. Uh, there is, let's hit the water thing first. There is, um, several different refill stations around campus where that they have their own like a hydro flask or whatever they are able to fill that up so uh, to make sure that they're in staying hydrated one of them is in Morro Cove but there are several around campus um, as far as things like uh, lemonade and iced tea and all of that kind of stuff it 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 it's part of the swipe when you come into the marketplace if you get it anywhere else, it is something that you have to purchase. Um, can roommates be selected after August 5? Um, not something Karen and I uh, are involved in. Uh, I believe that information, that process is coming to uh, uh, completion now. Um, if there are uh, any requests after August 5th, you'll be able to talk to um, and talk to housing to see what they can do to accommodate, okay? Um, are there water filling stations in the dorms? In uh, Upper Res Hall and McAllister, yes, where your students are going to be, absolutely. All right, we've got two minutes to uh, spare if there are any, um, uh, if there is anyone who wants to unmute and verbalize their question, please do so now. Uh, this is Brady again. Uh -huh. um, the tennis shoes for regular, I guess, their own personal time, there's no uh, re regulation on what kind of tennis shoes they have on campus, are there? Is there? No, there is not. Okay, great. Thank, thank you. Um, there, there are um, micro fridge and um, a microwave and fridge combo unit in every room. It's okay, um, Carrie. And um, all of these questions um, are also open to be asked when we when you meet the Res Life people, Melinda and Tim and um, Matt will be on board um, to, to help you out with that. In the meantime, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My phone number is now in the in chat. You can call me, text me, uh, and reach out to me at orientation at csun.edu. Don't hesitate to search for whatever your question is. Uh, on our website, you'll be surprised that there are lots of FAQs and answers that can be found there. 
Um, Karen, any last words? Just glad to have all of your, your cadets come and to be with us here at Comerica. That is so true. Um, it's 6.30, and again, as always, I am thankful for all of you uh, who are invested in your student success and also thankful for Karen for being here so late in the evening and helping us out with these questions and explaining the program. So have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. Um, and we'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye. Thank you. Very yeah. informative. Pleasure. Bye.